Let's go back down memory lane. So we open with Portia talking to Sissy Stewart about the pregnancy pass. Portia's pregnancy test is negative. Like the experience being married to Sissy Stewart. Negative. Her and Cordelia aren't on the same page when it comes to children. He doesn't think she's ready. Well, I don't think you're ready for a vagina. But there you are playing at one. Just playing at it. Messing over food. Meanwhile, across town with Candy and Donna Wanna, she getting some office space. Oh, that's right, she's building a studio space too. Nini's doing a press tour for the new normal. Nini's a young, fabulous glam mom. You're an over 50 moose with askew antlers and an inflated sense of self. Over with Penelope Thomas Bailey, he and Cynthia are heading out to a men's health awareness event for Atlanta's elite. Sounds like a men's empowerment scam to me. And of course, Walter got an invitate. Cynthia said, well, she sure, do. Kenya sure don't want to see Walter or his toupee today. Uh -huh. Cynthia said, well, you know, I am putting Kenya in a room full of men, so hopefully she'll find somebody to flirt with. She shouldn't be worrying about Walter. I mean, she flirted with other men the whole vacation in Anguilla. She should know how to do it in Atlanta. Back with the other sissy of the show, Push is letting her husband know that she respects her man and he did let her go on that girl's trip. And the girls were very upset that she wouldn't go to the strip club without her sissy's approval. And Cordelia's like, I'm in control, but I'm not controlling. But what's the plan for the family? Do you want a career or do you want a child? Ah. I say, I say, Portia, you right now, I'm not controlling, but I am in control. Now, we got to talk about the plan for the family. Do you want your career or do you want your child? You give more of a foghorn, leghorn tea. Which impression did you like? The first or the second? Let me know in the comments. I want you to be the mom and be there to feed the kids. You ain't hiring no nanny. You gonna raise them and stay home barefoot and bring them. Lord, and then he start that through prayer, we want to make good decisions. That's, that's that Christian chauvinism, that pulpit patriarchy, that ministry of masculinity. He making his wife cry on television. He ain't shit. So, of course, Walter is the first to show up to, to Peter's shyst. However, Kenya got another Renner man for the evening. She said, it's not a romantic date, but I'm sure he wishes it was. No, he doesn't. Otherwise, he would have tried it. Felon Parks and Apollo arrived to promote their donkey booty video, their last attempt at legal money. Now, I gotta agree with Kenya on the fact that Penelope Thomas Bailey would have sat Walter right next to you. However, he didn't sit her next to that toupee. Meanwhile, Kenya invites the girls to her celebration of black women in Hollywood moment and tells Portia to come as Halle Berry from BAPS. Portia sees the game and is like, nah, I want to do Dorothy Dandridge. And Kenya said, well, it's my party and, you and you'll come as Baps if I want you to. However, Portia, to say that you get Baps from you, um, no, that's pretty accurate. Except for the Bronner Brothers hair, you give Baps, boo. When you ran and beat that girl down in the alley in that Christmas outfit, that was Baps. Baps and Baps. So now all the menses get together and Penelope Thomas Bailey holds court. So Walter, how was Kenya's cooch? Walter said, I don't know. I didn't have none of it. I wanted a clean break. This half is so desperate for a baby, she might poke a hole in a condom. He said, it's just not for me. So Penelope says, she's ancient compared to the girls you normally date. And he says, oh yeah, I like them 22s, 24s, 26s. Give me a rim girl. Are we still doing rims? Is anybody doing rims? I guess they probably do rims on the West Coast. I don't know, I don't drive. And everybody tells me they're gonna break into my car out here and my insurance won't cover that. So I'm like, well, you know what? I'll worry about a car at a later date. Sissy Stewart backs it up with more questions. So I say, when you saw her tonight with Jamal, how did it, where did it take you? Walter and his toupee said, child, we stayed right here. She needs Jamal's help now. I can't help the heifer. I can't help him. So now Kenya's trying to make nice with the felonious Feifei. However, Feifei is still mad that she saw her husband grab your butt and feel your lump in Aruba. So Phaedra says she gonna let it go, but she let shit go like candy. She don't. 
So she invites Phaedra to the party as, oh, forget. Tell me, Marcus, am I wearing any panties? Nene thinks she's the biggest star, so she's never starstruck. Well, you were fired. Does that count as a strike? I guess it was one, two, three projects you were out. So you may not be starstruck, but you did strike out. Meanwhile, across town, Cynthia and Kenya go shopping for their costumes. Ooh! <clears throat> Cynthia picks out this gaudy, bedazzled, bejeweled dress. And I guess Diana Ross would have worn it back in the 70s. But um, it just shows Kenya's pageant-esque taste. It was like, oh, this, really? Kenya's like, why is Walter showing up anyway? And Cynthia said, well, honey, Atlanta is tiny. Everybody knows everybody. Only six clubs in this joker. So you go and see him and his toupee. So Cynthia tells Kenya everything that Penelope Thomas barely heard. Mm. Messy sissy. Walter didn't have sex with you because he wasn't into you. Well, that's a fact. That is a fact, an obvious fact. That was a fact that Kenya missed. We caught it. Everybody caught it. Everybody was like, what relationship are you talking about? What relationship are you in? Who you dating? Who? It ain't him. If you weren't attracted to me, why did you come to Angola? Cause you paid him and offered him a free vacation and free booze. And he said, you know what? I want to be on TV. Let me promote the business and get my 15 minutes in my flea market finery. Cynthia said, Kenya's really an attractive woman. Why wouldn't Walter want to hit that? I'd hit it. Actually, when you got in front of it, you went on and picked Portia. And that's why she was crotchety all season, because no one wanted her crotch. Not Mark, not you, not anyone. Or anybody, in the words of Walter. Bringing it on home. It's a heat wave out here, y'all, which means it's like 75 degrees, which is nice. I'm going to edit this by the pool. Child, she was initiating sex and he was pushing away. Why would you tell anybody that? I keep that under my tube. I've never seen the man with an erection. Again, something I wouldn't brag about. Walter, are you gay? <laughs> oh my goodness. Because he didn't want your crazy but he has to be cis. Now you should ask Cordelia that. Can you really go ask Cynthia to find her a man when all she could scare up at the time was Penelope Thomas Bailey? Mm-mm. Now she didn't found a decent man in Mike Hill. I'm gonna give her that. But, but, she is not the one to ask for man advice. Just don't bring me any men on the down low. You probably turning them out. They get so irritated with you, they're done with all women. But back at the Burrises, Penelope Thomas and Cynthia drop by to see the progress on the new homes. And Candy's looking homely with, with this Deb outfit she has on. I mean, you're on a television show so you can write off your wardrobe. Write it off, write it off, write it off, write it off. You don't always have to look so cheap. I know you want to pinch a penny till the buffalo poops, but girl, write it off. Goodness, we got to look at you at these reunions again. I think you're going to have them um little frizzy curls this year. Now, Candy's bedroom is nice. The house is nice. She spent some money on the house. She didn't cheap out, thank God. That is a nice bedroom. That I want a bedroom like that. It's very masculine. Not a lot of femininity. Or maybe there is a lot of femininity. <laughs> Cynthia said me and Penelope need to step our game up. I don't know if we need two houses, but we need a bigger house. Girl, you can barely pay the rent on, on the joker you in. Oh my goodness. Walter's at the house warming too. He keeps popping up like a bad fungus. Child Portia grinning ear to ear. She must have invited him. <laughs> Candy gonna say maybe Todd invited him. Maybe. how somebody show up to your house with a maybe invite? <laughs> I know you, but who invited I don't know who invited me either. Maybe you did. Maybe you did. Maybe. I have to be like, did you invite his ass here? And if you said no, I'd be like, oh, then we might have a problem. And speaking of problems, here comes Phaedra and a felon. Oh, and Walter brought a new woman. 
have Kenya's age. I will say Walter was trying to be a real husband of Atlanta without being married to a wife or a toupee. He wears a cheap, different one every day. I think this is his party hat. Oh my goodness. You know what, for a minute I thought I was watching The Music Man because now a felon goes up to Penelope Thomas and it's pick a little, tuck a little, pick a little, tuck a little, cheap, 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 tuck a lot, pick a little more, pick a little, tuck a little, pick a little, tuck a little, cheap, 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 tuck a lot, pick a little more, pick a little, tuck a little, pick a little, tuck a little, cheap, 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 tuck a lot, pick a little more. You know I heard that, you know I heard well from you, Penelope Thomas, that Kenya called Walter gay, so I told him exactly what happened, and he said he was going to let Kenya have it tonight. Child, he left River City, the library building, but he left all the books to her. Revelade, Chaucer, Balzac. Cheep 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 not in the Heights. And he live up there, he should, I'm sorry, like that ain't even the neighborhood. He lives in Washington Heights. He see, well maybe he don't see the brown people cause he gets car service down and ticket it. Also he on the white side of Washington Heights. There is a white side, it's west of Broadway. You go west of Broadway, it's um, a large Jewish community, families that moved uptown because they wanted big apartments and the co-ops that were like reasonably priced and him. But yeah, you get on the A train at like 175th, 181st. It's, it's white up there. Then it gets black around 145th. It gets black and Dominican. 125th is black and Dominican. Then um, 125th is more black and like island. And then you get to 59th. And then everybody gets off at 59th because you're changing trains. I mean, it doesn't stop at 59th. You might be going all the way downtown, but again, another video for another time. Walter introduces Phaedra to his new fling. <laughs> Cynthia said, Kenya told me she was coming, but I didn't know Walter was coming. And Portia says, I didn't either. Yes, you did. You sent him the invite. You said be there or be square, like you're to pay. Like you're to pay. Like you're to pay. She said you gay. You wear to pay. <laughs> Cynthia said, look, I don't mind respecting the girl code not inviting him or his to pay, but you didn't pissed off everybody else in the group where they like, oh, he's first on the list. He was shooting to be the first male friend of. Of course, Kenya arriving late. So Candy see Kenya coming and she said, now look, Walter here, and Kenya's pissed and rightfully so, cause you could have called me and told me that I might not have wanted to show up single. So Cynthia's on her lady diffuser, and she says, Kenya, let's take a tour downstairs since Walter's up here. <laughs> Kenya said, this isn't cool. He's a stalker. He's showing up to every event I'm at, and I don't have security. Why do you need security from a man that don't want you? You said you was naked as you please in front of him, and he didn't move a finger or a member towards you. Child, you ain't got to worry about him. Kenya's trying to run out the back way. And that was the shot. It's time for another San Francisco treat. So I went to Dandelion Chocolate. And my Trader Joe's bag. I went to Dandelion Chocolate and I got this. This is European drinking chocolate. Um, it's like hot chocolate, but supposed to be much more intense. And they gave you a little free, um, cookie on the side. There's a little cookie in there. I guess you eat it, you dip it. Can I get it out? Oh, okay, it comes off. Mmm. Oh, I own a bunch of these. We haven't even gotten to the main course yet. Oh, do I get another one? Oh, I got another one with the, um, it came with marshmallows. They probably make them themselves. Oh, it's a marshmallow. Oh, this is their marshmallow. It's a square. Okay, let me try a nibble of this. This is like, this is not something you get in the grocery store. Mm-hmm. This is a good marshmallow, okay. I mean, you could just dunk it. 
All right, so European drinking chocolate. Ooh. Can you see it? They filled it all the way up to the top. Okay, and it's still warm. I'm gonna have a little with the marshmallow. Let that sit on there. Well, I guess I should taste it straight first. You see, it was so good, I damn near dropped it. Oh, wow. Yes, it calls for marshmallow. Oh my God, this needs milk. This is so good. Oh, it's like drinking icing. Wow, this is, wow. Wow. I, this is gonna take me a week to finish. Like, I'm gonna freeze this and slowly but surely eat at it. I wonder what it tastes like frozen. This is amazing. And it was only $8. Now, it's a small cup, but you don't need any more than this is worth $8. I feel like I got my money's worth. I feel like I could have this like a little sip or so a day for them. <laughs> Does chocolate go bad? I don't even think this shit will go bad. It tastes so good, so rich. Do you hear it when it's just, it's like a pudding. Oh my God. Yeah, you need this with a glass of milk. You can taste the richness of the cocoa. You can still feel the cocoa powder. Like, wow, this is amazing. Oh yeah, this is definitely not something you could have. This is a, a perfect, it's a treat. It's a delightful, like, wintertime treat. It's funny, I got this on the warmest day. It's like 75 here, which is hot for here. And it's not too sweet. I think it's that bitterness that actually saves it that kind of makes you need the milk. Oh my God, wow. Shout out to my friend Brennan, who told me about this place and he raved and he raved and he was right. Brennan, if you're watching, you did the damn thing. And wait, there's more. I got their brownies too. I'm gonna go get some milk, I'll be right back. This rich ass chocolate. Yeah, you gotta mix it with some milk. But let's try the brownie. and a thick little bitelet. It's very rich, so you don't need that much. You really don't. A little goes a long way. But shout out to Dandelion Chocolate. I ain't never had nothing like this. Not never, ever, ever. I am impressed.